Thank you very much for having me. My name is Samuel Wagner, and I'm the president and CEO of Bhatti Biologics. Bhatti Biologics is an immuno-oncology company that's dedicated to developing therapeutics that address the multifactorial and multidimensional nature of cancer. Now, our lead therapeutic is a multivalent therapeutic vaccine that is targeting the tumor endothelium of solid tumors. And for this program, we have filed an IND application. We anticipate to receive clearance in Q1 of this year, and this would allow us to move forward with a phase one study for non-small cell lung cancer at the University of Utah. To date, we've raised a little bit less than two million in seed capital, and we've been focused on building a strong intellectual property portfolio. We've filed actually 22 patent applications. We just filed one yesterday, 10 of which are non-provisional. We've also received a freedom to operate legal opinion that we don't have to in-license any additional patents. Additionally, we've exclusively licensed and issued patent from UC San Diego. This is vaccine adjuvant technology that goes complementary with our lead program. And we're very proud to be a JLabs licensee since January of 2014. We hope to continue this positive relationship. Now, first I'd like to take a moment to discuss the role of angiogenesis or blood vessel formation in cancer's progression. And Dr. Folkman, one of the pioneers of angiogenesis, he showed that tumors cannot go bigger than two millimeters without stimulating blood vessels to feed them. This means that blood vessel formation is critical for tumors to grow to malignant stages where they're able to metastasize. Additionally, recent papers have come out showing that the tumor endothelium plays a role in directly promoting tumor tolerance. And this can be seen through the expression of FAST ligand and PDL1 on the tumor endothelium. FAST ligand directly kills cytotoxic T lymphocytes within the tumor microenvironment, and PDL1 is a very commonly known immune checkpoint that uh, downregulates the functionality of T cells within the tumor as well. Lastly, we now know that there are several angiogenesis associated antigens that are found on the tumor endothelium that are either downregulated or non expressed on healthy tissues. This means that we can target the tumor endothelium with a degree of specificity. Now, again, our lead product is a multivalent therapeutic vaccine that's targeting several angiogenesis associated antigens that are found on the tumor endothelium. And some of these antigens are endoglin, tumor endothelial marker 1, VEGFR1, and VEGFR2. We have seen no adverse effects against healthy vasculature in our GLP toxicology study. And additionally, in the preclinical setting, we have been able to slow tumor growth for multiple histologically distinct tumor models. We've used asyngeneic B16, 4T1, Lewis lung carcinoma, as well as a GL261 glioma model. And we have d also demonstrated synergy with checkpoint inhibitors in the preclinical setting. I'll show you a slide on that in a moment. We're ready to go with the phase one. We're awaiting the FDA's clearance. We have the GMP manufacturing set up, and we also have the PI selected at the University of Utah. Now I'd like to give a couple slides here um, that show the promise of our approach. On the right, we have a tumor inhibition model where mice received tumor inoculation on day zero, and thereafter they went on the Valivax vaccine regimen or received saline as the control. And we can see that the mice that received the Valivax vaccination had a significant inhibition of the tumor growth. On the left here, we have a quantification of CD31 positive cells found within cross sections of tumors that are taken on days 21 and 28. And we can see that the mice that received the Valivax vaccination had significantly less CD31 cells, meaning that there is a decrease in microvessel density, and this shows that there is anti-angiogenic activity. We've been learning a lot more about the mechanism of action, and we know there's strong cellular and humoral responses that are antigen specific, and I would be happy to share any data with people who are interested. Here's a slide on our preclinical studies combining Valivax with checkpoint inhibitors. We used a CTLA-4 blockade as well as a PD-1 blockade, and we strongly believe that taking a non-specific approach to augmenting T cell function by using checkpoint inhibition and combining this with active vaccination may be the best way to have clinical benefits. Now, angiogenesis is a proven clinical approach, and there's several drugs that have been met with blockbuster financial success. I'd like to take a look closer at Avastin, which currently has approval for non-small cell lung cancer. Now, 
Avastin is a monoclonal antibody that is blocking vascular endothelial growth factor, a protein that stimulates angiogenesis. The problem is that several other proteins are secreted by the tumor which can independently stimulate angiogenesis. So if you just block one of them, the tumor is able to compensate and secrete these other factors in larger amounts. This leads to the rapid development of treatment resistance, and this can be seen by the poor clinical benefit we see in Avastin's phase three study for lung cancer, where Avastin plus chemo had two months survival benefit compared to chemo alone. Now, the advantage of our approach is twofold. One, we are taking a multivalent approach to vaccinating against the tumor endothelium. And second of all, instead of inhibiting angiogenesis, we are trying to induce direct cytotoxicity against the tumor endothelium. Essentially, we are trying to kill the tumor blood vessels in an effort to choke the tumors of their blood supply. Now here is a snapshot of our clinical development plan. First, we have a 10 patient phase one study for non-small cell lung cancer, and this will be with the primary endpoints of safety and immunogenicity. After this, we have a tentative agreement with a well-known California Cancer Institute to run an investigator-initiated exploratory study in all solid tumors. This would be around 50 to 75 patients. This would allow us to see which patients are best responding to our therapeutic and identify an indication for which we would pursue the phase two pivotal study. We've also opened up a pharmacogenetics arm of Batu Biologics, and this is focused on identifying genes and biomarkers that are correlated to patients who respond positively from the drug. So how we would do this is we would screen for a large subset of angiogenesis markers in every patient that goes through our <coughs> clinical trials. Once we've treated enough patients to have statistical relevance around 50 to 100, then we can start making correlations to overall survival and immunological response. The ultimate goal here is to develop a companion test that would be an effective and efficient method of determining who responds best to our therapeutic. Here's a quick look at our management, and I'd like to highlight one individual, Dr. Thomas Ickham, who's really a strong scientific pioneer for the company. He was previously the CEO and CSO of Medistem, which used cell therapy to stimulate angiogenesis. In terms of our company, we follow a virtual company model, which JLabs fits into nicely, and we prefer to use academic collaboration to carry out our preclinical studies. Here's a look at our board of directors that has both regulatory, clinical, and business experience. The chairman of the board is Dr. Alan Lewis, and he has a track record of bringing companies through venture-backed financing and to their subsequent exits by large pharma. We also have John Chiplin sitting on the board, who is the former CEO of Polynoma, a phase three cancer vaccine company. Our scientific advisory board is filled with immunologists, experts in pharmacogenetics and cancer vaccines, and really the champion of our SAB is Dr. Argirios Theophilopoulos, who is the vice chair of immunology at the Scripps Research Institute. Now, to sum this up, why invest with Bati Biologics? Currently, we're looking for another VC that can syndicate on the three million round. We have one who's interested. We're also looking for private individuals. Non-small cell lung cancer has a significant unmet medical need. There's a need for less toxic, more effective therapeutics in the market. And checkpoint inhibitors, for example, have only about a 10% response rate. This is a bar that needs to be raised. Additionally, there's a significant market opportunity. Um, Non-small cell lung cancer alone is $7 billion worldwide. Given that we've demonstrated efficacy in multiple solid tumor indications, this market size much, might be much larger. And lastly, the differentiation of our approach, this is a very novel target for vaccination, and we are the first commercial entity to take a multivalent approach to vaccinating against the tumor endothelium. We have excellent safety profile in our GLP toxicology study, and we feel that this de-risks our phase one significantly. Thank you very much, and I'd be happy to take any questions.